Susan Dunlop. I'm a life coach and today I would like to just talk to you about a concept called the feather, the brick and the truck. You might have heard of it. I think you'd also call it an analogy. So it's about the universe is constantly sending us messages to help us to stay on our journey in life and to help us make um, our life easier. And the idea of the feather, the brick and the truck is it's the way in which the universe delivers some of these messages to us. As I go through this, you'll probably realize that you will um, relate to some of the feathers, some of the bricks, and hopefully not too many of the trucks. It was, I first learned about this analogy at a business course I was at in Fiji, and I thought, oh, that's really interesting. You know, at the time I was all sort of pumped, the business was really going well, and it was just booming, and organic growth, word of mouth referrals, we never advertised, and it was just, everything seemed to be ticking over just beautifully, like we'd finally, you know, thrown ourselves through some of the ceilings that we'd been working towards for so long to, to take the business up through the next level. Um, and then when I came back from the course, you know, everything continued as it was and the sales were smooth and stable and they were just sort of staying at that really high rate and we just really felt like, um, yeah, it was all just being the whole feeling of success really. And then it was, it was a nursing agency, so I supplied nurses um, ad hoc to hospitals and nursing homes. It was all, all across Queensland. So one day, though, I just had a nurse friend call me, and she just said, oh, a friend of hers who was a registered nurse at the local public hospital or Queensland Health Hospital said that the nurses were being let off at the hospital. I was like, what? No, nurses never get let off. Like, there's always a shortage of nurses. And then it was about the new government was had just come into the state government um, in Queensland in the, the state that we live and they were making changes they were actually making massive changes and you know, it was it was just it was really a first but it was just so out there I just didn't really sort of take it in as being something that was going to impact me I suppose and you know, so I went on with my day and that would be the feather in this story so the feather is the first message we get. Uh, it's the gentle reminder or the nudge or a push in a particular direction. Uh, you know, another example of a feather might be that, you know, two or three people telling you about the same book or a course and then you see it in a magazine and everything seems to be clicking together and you think, oh, I should actually read that or I should go along to that. And um, it could be otherwise someone, someone popping up in your mind and, you know, you hear that a lot. Someone says, oh, I was just really thinking about you um, and I decided I need to give you a call. Or it could be like a new change to you know, one customer or you know, what was happening to me. And it just catches your attention, but you don't act. So, you know, ideally you might act, but if you don't act, that's an example of the universe sending you a message as a feather. So if we don't listen to the feather, then we get hit with a brick. So in the case of the story I'm telling you, as weeks went by, you know, the outfall of nurses from not just one, but all of the Queensland Health Hospitals escalated. And they were really shocked that they were being put off and they needed jobs. And obviously I was a place that employed nurses mostly and always had a demand for nurses. So they came knocking on my door. Unfortunately, as a supplier to Queensland Health, I wouldn't have been writing my contract to resupply them their ex-nurses. And there was also the second problem was that Queensland Health had decided at the same time as these um, layoffs, rightly so, they decided they would not book any agency staff across Queensland. So I pretty much lost my um, a, a massive service line at that time. And I had to say sorry to the nurses that were wanting to join my books because I had a, a pool of really loyal nurses who I needed to make sure that they were getting a pay packet still. And you know, they were starting to panic a little bit and they were, they were worrying that maybe um, agency wasn't going to be the right thing for them. So it was all about just, it's going to be all right. We just need to try and get this stable and let's just see um, where we go one step after the other. You know, so it was the brick. So the brick is a not so gentle reminder. So the brick is um, an example of a brick might also be a significant change in your workplace or like a new manager coming on um, that you're going to struggle with to get along with um, or a restructure in the business and you know you might end up in a job that you're not even happy with. Um, it could be COVID-19 and all its impact. It could be a health related and suddenly you're off work for three weeks with like a stress related illness and if you're not 
paying attention to that brick at that time, that's when we get hit with a truck. So in my, in my case, it was like smack. Sales halved in one week and you know, our pre-booked rosters were being cancelled by the private hospitals now, as well as all the aged care facilities that I supplied because suddenly they were inundated with those ex-Queensland health nurses who wanted jobs. And I mean, the, the, they thought they were just blown away because they could never get enough staff. That's why they used me in the first place. But now the whole industry had all their rosters filled and obviously they didn't need my service anymore. So, you know, I don't know why I didn't see it coming. I think at the time, because everything had been actually going up, 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 I, I had that probably an inflated sense of, it's okay, whatever happens, we can always shore it up. We can always just take it up to the next level again. But um, the fall was massive and it continued to fall. So that's a truck. That's a massive shift in life. And the truck is about a massive shift in the life as we know it, our normal life. Um, another example of a truck might be loss, you know, loss of your job completely. Um, the Prime Minister telling you that you, know, you weren't able to actually keep your restaurant open um, the following day and that, that went, meant the impact that was going to roll out against every other area of your life would be massive. Um, loss of a relationship and loss of a loved one. Um, or something that you actually get a very serious, um, you know, um, announcement from your doctor that you have actually taken that your health issue that was maybe there back in the brick phase to the next level and is getting a bit more that you're um, not going to be able to turn it around. So all of a sudden we're forced to make massive changes in our lives. Um, again, back to my story, you know, our sales, they halved for six months and then they dropped to only about a quarter. Um, I went through a massive amount of, the, well, I would call it, I dropped to the dark depths. I was an ice cold fear, you know, totally freaking out that you know, the bank was going to possibly shut me down. And I remember I had a coach and I remember my coach saying to me, Susan, stop for a minute. You know, when you're submerged and you know that you've only got like you know, two inches from the surface, uh, two inches from, you know, the next breath, you're going to try and do anything to claw your way to the top, aren't you? Yeah. So she said, you know, you've got choices here, Susan. And she said, you should always um, coach me that you always have at least five choices. And I totally believe that as well. So I, I coach the same principle now, obviously, from all her wealth of experience that she passed on to me. So we sat and we explored all my choices. And, you know, it was just as simple as how important is it to you to make the business turn around, to stay open? Um, what's it going to take to turn it around? You know, are we going to remodel it, reposition, pivot, go into another um, avenue of employment versus nurses? We could go into another industry altogether. And, um, you know, if I close the doors, what does that mean? And, you know, that was really looking like a big possibility to us. And, you know, I, it, it, there was plenty of others that we went through, but I just knew in my heart that I was going to actually turn it back around. I took it very seriously that um, as a leader, that it was something that I had seen that I hadn't actually um, picked up on. And I took it as my responsibility to make the business become back to its former strength. And I made massive changes and uh, really hard decisions. Uh, we had to um, drop all our staff in the office and it became pretty much just pretty four of us out of 20. And um, somehow I found everything in me. Like it was, you know, those moments when you actually realize that there's like a, it's like a silence around you. You think you've got the calm, the clarity, the determination. Everything seems crystal clear. Even though people saying, oh, what, what, how, what have you done? Why is all this happening to you? I think, no, it's just one thing. I just need to deal with one thing today and I'll deal with another thing after that. And I'll deal with another thing after that. But, you know, I had also, um, you know, life was going on around me too. Like my dad got diagnosed with um, uh, terminal cancer in this time and he was, you know, very close to me and um, had six months to live and he did pass away during all of this happening. So I suppose just listen to the messages that you get from the universe is all I can say. In particular, listen to the feather and then you won't have to worry about the brick or the truck. Um, in my case, the, um, the truck 
it was pretty close to catastrophic and we had a lot of grief and um, loss going on even more so than what happened with my dad there was a lot more happening in our life at that time but from that as I say from the darkness comes light from that darkness I became a much stronger more aware leader of the business as I took it back up to its former glory um, over the next three years and had it returned to the um, the value I wanted because I had a plan to sell it within three years at that stage and I took it back to the stage that I knew I would actually get that money and that I had all the tactics in place and the strategy in place so that I was looking very much like something a competitor would like to buy and that's what we did we sold to a national competitor and I did have to stay on that's probably another truck moment I said yes to staying on for two more years um, as an earn out that was a little bit crazy but after that I freed myself up to go and find who else I was and that's where the coaching now um, I, I draw on all of that life experience and all of that business experience that I've got and it means that I can be a much better um, in a confidant and trusted advisor as a coach and mentor uh, to the clients that I have because you know I've I've been through a lot and um, yeah, and I'm always learning. So like you, everyone always wants to go to the next level and, um, and find, you know, what it is that you want in life that's much more important to be more so than do or have. Mm -hmm.